What's going on there guys? Today we're going to be turning Van Gogh's Starry Night Canvas into a cool 3D animation all from using Photomotion Parallax. As usual, our first step will be splitting this image up into several layers within Photoshop. So let's get cracking with our project. First step is to duplicate the layer from the background and use the square marquee tool to get rid of these faded edges over here so that as we go forward we're only dealing with the painting. Next is to get rid of these last few faded areas over here using the polygon lasso tool and once selected press fill over here and using the content aware option let's fix those edges so feel free to be meticulous about this as with some paintings there is some faded or damaged areas obviously there are other ways to do this like using the clone stamp tool only content aware is a decent way of getting things done quickly and with mostly okay results speaking of you can also see that even after we've used content aware there are still a couple of imperfections okay so we're just going to use the spot healing brush just to get rid of a couple of these we're trying to get rid of the majority of these imperfections here but as long as most of them are tidy it should be fine okay so now onto the layer setup portion of this tutorial select quick selection tool on the toolbar to select the cypress tree and bushes in the foreground because of these outlines you shouldn't have too much of a difficult time trying to get this selection done but just try and be as precise as possible once you're happy go to select and mask just over here and you'll be able to really precisely finite these edges don't forget to set your brush size to whatever you feel comfortable and then start brushing these areas in. Feel free to be as precise as you want within this section and when you're done go to output settings and change the output to new layer with mask. Cool, so that's our layer one selected. Next step is providing information to Photoshop about what is behind layer one within the painting. You'll see what I mean in a minute. We'll also need to make sure that this layer one is enabled, our new layer is disabled, and make sure that our selection is visible by holding control and then clicking on this mask. First, let's expand our mask by going to select, then modify and finally expand. We'll set this to 10 pixels and after, once we've selected the quick selection tool, we'll go to fill like earlier and again make sure that this is set to content aware. As you may have discovered by now with content aware, it's a quick process, but it's not perfect. So of course there are a few bits that we need to improve upon. Let's go to the spot healing brush just over here to fix a couple of these issues. What we really need to get rid of is any indication of the outline that the tree has left behind and remove the extra bit of town created too. We'll also use the patch tool to finite these areas. As this section will be layer number two, we'll need to be focusing on making it as good as possible as more than likely people are going to see what's behind it immediately within the animation. Remember focus on what can and can't be seen. Okay so fairly happy with that let's move on to selecting our next layer. What we want here is the town over here and maybe a little bit of the hill and some of these stars with the moon. With surreal paintings it might be difficult to choose which part that you want in which layer so take some time to think about what will work in parallax and what probably won't. Once again go to select a mask over here and here we can get a little bit more picky and precise about where we want our second layer to end. Feel free to use a variety of different tools to make sure you've got exactly the selection that you want and remember to carefully think about what you want within your selection. Again, make sure that the output here is set to new layer with mask before you hit OK and that's our second layer complete. So as said before, let's give some leeway to this fill by going over to modify and expand and let's set this to around 15 pixels and switch back to the selection tool right click here and press fill once again we want to make sure that the contents is left at contents aware fill and click ok let's go to the patch tool again and sort out a couple of these areas that need a little bit more tlc okay so looking all right so far feel free to disable and enable these layers to double check your work and make sure everything looks natural final layer now we'll be speeding this up a bit but essentially what we want is this terrain here and the rest of the stars within this picture as mentioned before with surrealism it's really important that you take your time and think about how you want it to look at the end and at last let's create our clean plate by just using the final layer as a mask and filling in the background using content aware now there are a couple of issues here but don't worry about being too precise with the clean plate if you have multiple layers in front because more than likely it won't be seen so believe it or not that's actually the hard part of the animation over let's rename some of these layers so that we don't get lost in after effects when we want to 
import them. We'll use each one of these layers within our animation and see about what more we can add to these to really bring this image to life. Lastly, before we leave Photoshop, let's just make sure that we save unless we really want to run into some heartbreak. Try and place it in an area with not too much traffic and easy for you to remember. For us, we just use the desktop. And here we are, each one of these layers within our animation. They look pretty good, but there's obviously some room for improvements in Photomotion. As said before, we're using Parallax, so let's get to the latest version. As anyone who's used Photomotion already knows that this is a viewport-based application, so most of the work is done through using the buttons and effect controls. So first things first, let's press Start Parallax to begin our project. Next thing what we want to do is press this Add Background button, and once we're here, just need to import our Photoshop project. Right, what we don't want to do here is merge all of our layers together in one and defeat the purpose of what we did earlier. So let's make sure our import kind is set to composition and our layer options is left to editable layer styles. Next, let's grab our clean plate from the project window and throw it into our composition. We'll also need to parent this Photoshop layer to the layer above whilst holding shift before scaling up. And as usual, make sure not to scale the layer itself, but scale the null layer here. And once we're done, here's our background. Pretty simple enough, so let's get jumping into these other layers and do the same. Let's go to layer one on the dashboard over here and drag in our first layer. Now, no need to scale it here because we've already done that with the background layer. So just parent it to the layer on top in order to copy these attributes across. Cool, so let's do the same with layer two, layer three, and layer four quickly in exactly the same fashion. Excellent, and here we are, all four parts of our image. Let's set our animation length by moving the playhead to the desired time, setting the end of our work path, and finally move this controller around a little bit. Let's just use the zoom here to bring us a little bit further within this scene. Really nice, we can test out our animation by moving this controller around, and it looks great so far. As you can see, we have some blank spaces around our animation. We will get to fixing those in a bit, but for now, let's put a pin in it. So we can add in one loop into our animation if we double the length of our current working path. So in this case, if we set our playhead to eight seconds and then setting that as the end of our working path, you can see that our camera comes back out again from inside the animation. Let's add some particles into our scene by going over to the settings button just over here and checking the activate particles checkbox within effect controls. We can change the particle type just over here, maybe something like 30, which are these little light objects, I suppose. All right, it kind of actually fits rather quite nicely into our scene, although obviously they're a little bit too dark. So let's adjust their color just over here. And we want them a little bit more brighter. We can do the opposite with our background by going over to the background button over here, then back to color and dipping these curves. Very nice. We have some really nice contrast now going on between our particles and our background. So what else can we do in terms of animation? Well, maybe we can add some life into this town just over here by using a very simple effect. Remember, we have all the tools within After Effects at our disposal, so let's not think about limiting ourselves. Let's jump to layer two and create a new adjustment layer within this composition, and then we can think about applying a glow effect over here to maybe get this town to pop out a little bit more within our animation. Now, we don't want the stars included in this, so let's just make sure that we mask out the town within our adjustment layer. Let's go back to the glow effect and tweak it a little bit so it fits our animation just a little bit more. If we want to see the effect that it's made, we can also enable and disable the effect, and you can really see the difference here. Even though it's a small effect, it just helps highlight that town area within the animation a little bit better. So we could, in theory, think about animating our background out a little bit more because it looks a bit static at the moment. So let's go to add background layer just on the main dashboard, do exactly the same regarding adding an adjustment layer, and then we're going to search for a warp effect within the effects panel. We'll want to correct the effect instantly as, no doubt, we don't want our background to look like this. Let's change our warp style to twist and dull the effect a little. As said before, we want to only make small adjustments as we don't want to draw too much of attention from our overall animation. So while your playhead is at the very beginning of the composition, go to the blend option and then click on the stopwatch. Then move your playhead to the exact point where your last keyframes are on the main animation. You may need to check this on the main dashboard for timings. For us, remember it was around about four seconds. And let's add a small amount of twist, say around about 18 here, just for good measure. Now that's okay, but we want to buff out the edges a little bit more so the center has more spacing. Let's copy and paste the effect on the same layer and then change warp style here to fisheye. And now by stacking these two effects together, we have a really nice gradual motion going on here in the background. But we have 
a small problem. Since our animation is actually looping out, we'll need to make sure that our background layer animation does so too, otherwise we'll run into this issue. So let's go back to this background layer, move our playhead to the very end of our animation, the 8 seconds point, and copy and paste the very beginning keyframes that are at zero over to the very end. Remember to do this for both effects, not just one or the other. And now our animation loops out with our background layer quite seamlessly. So let's go back to the dashboard, move our playhead to the 4 seconds mark where our controller keyframes are, and add some rotation into this animation to make it a little bit more dynamic. So we can either click on the plus or minus sign here and move this rotation slider just over here. So we could also add some more contrast into this animation by darkening this tree in the foreground. Go to layer 1 on the main dashboard and then go to color correction just over here and add some dip in the curve here. And before we even think about rendering, let's change our output to 4K by going over to resolution just over here and changing this 1080p to 4K. Well, you can also change the output ratio over here, but for this image, we're going to use a custom one outside of these fields, which we'll show you how to do so in just a second. So let's go to export and over here, change the time code to keyframes by control clicking on these numbers here and typing 240 for one loop. The Photo Motion Perfect Cut system is now showing a green light and telling us that we have one loop selected for render in our composition. Make sure, of course, to set the end of your workspace and we're good to go. But what about the aspect ratio I hear you saying? We can still do our own custom version by going to the composition settings and changing the width and height of our composition from here. Just make sure that if you're going to do this, this lock aspect ratio isn't ticked. Otherwise, these two will be moving proportionately. So if we play around with the width, we can cut these black edges out. I think something around about 2750 will probably do. And as you can see, no blank space left around the frame. So let's go to export this out now as an MP4 by going to composition and then add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. So within Media Encoder, just make sure that all the settings here are to your liking and the output is set to H264. And there we go. Our animation is now complete and it looks really, really nice. See about playing around with surrealist paintings with parallax and please make sure to share your results with us. Until next time.